Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are in conversation with uh, Professor Bishwajit Dhar. He teaches economics at the Jawaharlal Nehru University and he's been one of the people in India who followed trade negotiations and negotiations within the World Trade Organization since its inception. And we will be discussing with him the issue of e-commerce, which is going to be one of the prominent discussion points at the WTO ministerial meeting, which is happening the end of the year in Buenos Aires. Welcome to News Clip. Thank you. Why is e-commerce in this ministerial meeting uh, seen as such a prominent issue? What are the uh, motivations behind uh, making this a major discussion point at the ministerial? Let me uh, start from the very beginning. You know, e-commerce is something that is not new to the WTO. Uh, it, it was uh, introduced as uh, 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 an issue in 1998, uh, the ministerial, the second ministerial conference, and then a work program was agreed. And one of the things that was ad agreed in, the, in 1998 was that uh, uh, there will not be any uh, import duties imposed on electronic transmissions. Now, if you re remember the world 20 years back, uh, we, di we didn't know that uh, uh, the, the world of internet is going to take this kind of a form, it's going to expand and it's going to have such so, what you're basically saying is that the e-commerce in 98 is very different from the e-commerce in 2017. Absolutely. And, and what was agreed in, in, um, in 1998, uh, and if you want to uh, go, by, go down the same path in terms of um, letting e-commerce uh, take place without governments imposing any import duties on the products, then the ramifications are, are, are very different. So there, there appears to be uh, an attempt to define e-commerce uh, uh, to include a lot of things. So how, how has this definition changed and what is being proposed currently? Over a period of time, we have seen the entire uh, 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 definition of e-commerce change. And, and this definition has also been um, sort of accepted by major organizations like the OECD. But and not in the WTO as yet. Not yet in the WTO. And, and the OECD definition of e-commerce uh, uh, actually reflects the reality of e-commerce as we know today. So yeah. what does it include? It includes, it includes uh, virtually uh, all kinds of uh, you know, cross-border movements of goods taking place through this, this particular platform of e-commerce. So the Amazons and the Alibabas of the world, what they are doing today, is all part of e-commerce. Would it be correct to say that e-commerce, uh, as is being defined now, straddles the world of services as well as of goods? No, certainly so. You have a bundle of services in e-commerce, uh, backing e-commerce, which is virtually uh, a platform for trade in goods. And, and that is what is happening now that uh, a bunch of countries, uh, not more than 25, 30 countries, who are backing the inclusion of e-commerce in the WTO and are, uh, are uh, demanding the same uh, kind of terms to be introduced uh, or to be uh, brought in today, which was introduced in 1998. So continuation of the uh, 1998 situation, uh, where uh, e-commerce was not taxed, but now in a situation where e-commerce embraces a lot of other areas. Is that what we are looking Absolutely. at? Absolutely. So now we are virtually looking at a si si situation where e-commerce will bring in uh, uh, a comprehensive trade liberalization. So, so the way I look at e-commerce, the discussions in e-commerce today in the WTO, I see it as an extension of, you know, this attempt at liberalizing trade completely, you know, so no holds barred liberalization. And uh, so all the discussions that we were having till now under the Doha development agenda that uh, market opening will be calibrated and will be calibrated uh, looking at the interests and the, and the 
uh, abilities of different countries to liberalize their trade given their domestic sensitivities those all these issues are being put in the back burner when you have liberalized trade and if i may add which are the countries which are pushing for e-commerce not to be taxed yeah you know this is this is an agenda of glo global capital very clearly and uh, uh, today you know, you know that the global capital uh, you know uh, is is not a north south issue um, because there are countries in the south uh, which are have become big votaries of uh, global capital china being the the most important and uh, china has actually uh, become the leader you know sort of the uh, of this whole pack of countries which want uh, uh, you know, sort of rapid trade liberalizations, and 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 China also has a major interest uh, because Ali, Alibaba is now fast becoming the largest uh, e-commerce uh, you know company now. So, for a country like India, what does it really mean if you do not tax uh, transactions through e-commerce? Uh, is it a huge loss for us in terms of uh, sovereign taxes that otherwise should come to us? The first is that. Uh, uh, what you mentioned that uh, you know there is uh, going to be no tax on e-commerce, which means that there are revenue implications. Yeah? Now, it's a fact that uh, customs revenue has become a small part or a smaller part of the total revenue, but it still is an important source of uh, of, of revenue for the government. So it will be uh, very difficult for India to actually adjust to a situation where it you know just, just lets go uh, uh, customs revenue that's number one but the more important implication is uh, will come from trade liberalization now as you know that uh, a government of india uh, has been trying to uh, you know sort of revive the manufacturing sector uh, now this of course hasn't really worked but and if you liberalize completely then there's going to be an impact on the manufacturing, uh, you know, this revival uh, agenda. In the run-up to the ministerial, uh, are there countries which have explicitly opposed uh, the attempt by the developed countries and China to uh, not tax e-commerce transactions? Yeah, we have, you know, on uh, uh, we are told that government of India has also opposed, and uh, this is what we hear from our officials that. In the discussions, uh, we have opposed uh, e-commerce. Uh, of course, uh, we do not have any evidence that India has supported. Nothing in form of a, a, a position paper uh, till now. Uh, you know, we may do it tomorrow. Who knows? The most important uh, uh, group which has opposed e-commerce and, and has very good reasons, uh, given very good reasons to oppose e-commerce, e is the African group. And and. Uh, and, and, and let me also tell you that the, there is the, uh, the supporters of e-commerce are, are actually straddling the developed and the developing world. So although there, so is, there is something called supporters of e-commerce. They, they call them. themselves friends of e-commerce. Friends e so friend, they call them friends of e-commerce. And the friends of e-commerce, very interestingly, are, are talking about a development dimension of e-commerce in which they say that the, sm the, uh, the medium, the micro, small and medium enterprises, the MSMEs, they will benefit from e-commerce. But this is an interesting trend, isn't it, that we have seen it earlier, for example, in the trade in services agreement that was, uh, that's still going on, where the developed countries then recruited developing countries that's who right. called themselves the friends of TISA. In that's this right. case, they, so this is a, seems to be a trend in trade negotiations yes, that the right. developed that's countries right. get together and then that's they right. recruit by whatever means, uh, smaller country. Yeah, but this time, you know, I've, uh, it, it seems that some of these developing countries have now got habituated uh, to sort of back the developed countries. The the worrying, uh, um, uh, you know, part in all this is that you know countries like India used to uh, uh, focus on the development dimension of trade liberalization. And they always argued, and we all argued, we, uh, you know, sort of backed Indian government in that position, saying that, you know, the, the, uh, the development aspirations, particularly of the smaller players, uh, should not be sacrificed in the name of trade liberalization. Now, this, uh, uh, you know, platform, the de development platform, has actually been hijacked by these guys. So, uh, if we can finish uh, with a question which is uh, perhaps a larger issue, 
that in the WTO, you had a situation earlier when under the leadership of countries such as India, Brazil, uh, there was an attempt to bring together the developing countries uh, to try to stall or oppose uh, issues that the US or Europe would uh, bring forth. But that kind of a solidarity, that kind of an attempt seems to now have uh, gone into the back burner. And it is now the developed countries who are in a position to recruit uh, smaller and poorer countries for their agenda. So do you see as a, on a long, uh, in the long run, this as a major threat to the whole multilateral agenda of the World Trade Organization? This aspect of the WTO, where uh, we all thought that the developing countries would come together and articulate their interest from a common platform, that has got, uh, you know, uh, uh, that has taken a big hit in uh, in the run-up to Buenos Aires. There are a number of countries who have joined the big uh, players in supporting uh, issues like e-commerce, investment, uh, and, uh, and and th things like that, which was never part of the developing country agenda. So, uh, in my view, you know, the whole North-South battle, where the South stood very strongly in uh, uh, supporting the development agenda and and can carry forward uh, this uh, this plank that is the re the real uh, you know uh, i would say uh, the victim of the the process l uh, leading up to mc11 the biggest advantage of the wto and the multilateral platform that we saw in the past was that uh, there was a possibility of the developing countries coming together and, and forming these coalitions, which could then uh, stand up to the might of the big guys. And uh, today we find that uh, uh, this possibility has taken a, se a severe beating because you know you have this group of developing countries who are supporting issues like e-commerce and investment, which were never a part of the developing country agenda. This was actually the agenda of global capital and they were uh, pushing this agenda relentlessly in the WTO till now and uh, they were not getting any um, move forward because developing countries were resisting. So uh, for me, uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, demise of the southern platform, the developing, the possibility of the developing countries coming together and, uh, uh, and, and securing a, a better share of global trade and and, uh, uh, and 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 thereby uh, creating possibilities of development that has become the biggest victim so what you're saying basically is that two decades back uh, in seattle there was a a kind of a coalition that was built and what we are seeing now uh, is that coalition really coming apart of developing countries. That's right. And uh, here, you know, the, the countries which got together in, in Seattle included India and India and Brazil. China was providing tacit support. It did so after it joined the WTO in 2001. But today we find that Brazil and China are firmly entrenched in the other camp. And India doesn't seem to be say, uh, s saying uh, what it should say in a very strong way. Absolutely. And, and, and India uh, is is uh, is remaining silent, and and this is a very strange India that we are seeing. We are not used to seeing an India in particularly in the WTO. I mean, earlier countries would look up to India for leadership. Absolutely, and countries uh, really rallied around India. Uh, I think uh, we all expect that the the ultimate results are going to be very different from what we were expecting uh, in the past two decades. Thank you, thank you, Professor Dhar. Thank you for being with NewsClick. This is all we have uh, for the moment, but do keep watching NewsClick for further updates on the, this and other stories.